Okay, today is day two on the unit circle. So I figured I probably should spend a little bit of time talking about the unit circle. So that's why we're on this page of the document. Now, it is powerful. It is a ton of information all in one spot. And if you understand from what I told you yesterday that sine is y and cosine is x, then it's super easy when you find like, okay, I'll just look at that one, 2 pi over 3. What is sine? of 2 pi over 3. Root 3 over 2. Boom. Done. Okay, what is the cosine of 2 pi over 3? Negative a half. Boom. You're done. Do you get how if I gave you one of these during the test, it could make the test extremely easy? Okay, well, I'm not going to give you one of those during the test, but could you memorize it? Yeah, you could. Now, it is a little daunting, but there are some patterns that we should talk about because even though some of the teachers here at the high school are bigger believers in using the unit circle than others, what everybody believes is that the patterns here are cool and, and worth noticing. Okay, and honestly, there's so many patterns that you're not even ready for seeing that I'm not going to try to show you everything. But here's some obvious ones. Root 3 over 2 comma half shows up four times. It shows up here. And it shows up here, and it shows up here, and it shows up here, with varying states of negativeness. All right. In other words, there's negatives in some of these. Now, does that make sense to you? If you're in this quadrant, do you get to get here? You had to go to the left and then up, and do you get how one of those sides is negative? Does it make sense then that I could have a negative in there that I didn't before? How about to get down here? Do you get I go? to the negative direction and then another negative direction. So you get how there could be negatives in that answer. All right. So those four, though, are pretty much the same thing. It's just that here you have your what's are negative, your x's or y's. Right here, your x's or y's are negative. Your x's are negative. And if you just think about this as a big coordinate graph, yeah, of course your x's are negative there. Here your x's and your y's are negative. Here, just your y's are negative because you went down, but you went to the right, so that's positive. And here, everything's positive. All right. So then just a quick, the rest of them also are reflected. That's the same as that, which is the same as that, which is the same as that, and then it goes back to here. And those are all the same numbers, just that you just, just move your negatives around. Okay. And then last but not least, these four. I missed on that one, but close enough. Those four are all the same. Okay. Now, let's just show you how quick, if you have this puppy down, if you've got it memorized, or if they give you a chart, which we will not give you on the test, but we will actually sometimes in your homework. Let's see how quick you can be here. Would you please find for me the sine of 7 pi over 4? Say it when you see it. Sine 7 pi over 4. Negative root 2 over 2. Now, if I made you do that by hand, you probably would have found 7 pi over 4. And then you would have gone, okay, I can make a triangle for that. And then you'd go, okay, these are a bunch of pi over 4, so that's pi over 4, so it's 45. Do you see how it saved a ton of time compared to all of this? And this is 1, 1, and root 2. And then i got to remember that that's negative. And then I can get my answer, which is, what did I ask for? Sine or cosine? Sine. Okay, the sine of it is opposite over hypotenuse, negative 1 over root 2, which, as I said before, um, oh, wait, that's supposed to be a... Yes, and here it is. Ah, that's right. This one is the same thing. 1 over root 2 is the same exact thing as root 2 over 2. I just forgot. Uh, we talked about that earlier this hour. But Okay, so moral of the story. I showed you how to do this without the unit circle, but that's how you could use the unit circle to do these. Right? And uh, it's up to you on whether or not you want to try to memorize it. What the calc teachers tell the kids, and almost all of you are going to be taking calc, and therefore, almost all of you are going to be taking the AP test next year. Is they say, the unit circle is awesome, but you don't have time to write out the entire unit circle 
on the test. You have approximately one minute per problem. Okay, so you need to be able to do stuff quick. And if there was a ton of trig on the test, then it would be like one of these deals where it might be worth drawing out the unit circle, right? But if there's only like two questions on trig on the entire test, you can't afford to draw the unit circle to answer two questions on. All right. So now let's move on and talk about what if I don't give you the unit circle? Everybody make a circle with your x and your y axis and now let's see if you can without the unit circle find for me find 5 pi over 4 5 pi over 4 and to me I'd be thinking that's well I got to find pi over 4 and then count it up 1 pi over 4 2 pi over 4 etc and then I'd like to know what the sign of 5 pi over 4 is. I'll pause for a second while you work that one out. I need a drawn triangle. Don't try to do this all in your head. You will not get credit on the test either for answers that don't have a triangle drawn with its sides. I'll pause while you try that. 5 pi over 4 is located here. I like one kid started doing this, I kind of like it. That's where the original is, 1 pi over 4. That's 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4 goes here. So that one's 5 pi over 4. Okay. So then, if that's 5 pi over 4, then I can put in some sides on it if I could figure out what angles they are, because that's a right angle. That's got to be a pi over 4, also known as a 45. If you haven't got those in your, win in your memory banks, pi over 4 is a big one. Pi over 6 is a big one. Pi over 3 is a big one. And pi over 2 is a big one. What's pi over 2? What's pi over 3? What's pi over 4? And what's pi over 6? Excellent. Know those, like the back of your hand. Okay. So pi over 4, which is what this was, is 45. And then that makes this a 1, 1 root 2. And that means if I want to make the most common mistake, I should just leave it this way. What's the most common mistake in circle trig? Negatives. Okay, so this is a negative and that's a negative. All right, so now sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite, negative 1 over hypotenuse root 2. Negative 1 over root 2. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Now, quick warning here. Some people get this confused with the unit circle. Look at the radius that I just drew. Did I do it on the unit circle? No. Could I make it be on the unit circle? Yes, by dividing this by itself, I'm forcing the radius to be 1. And then I have to divide everything by that. Now I've used the same ratio. It's just much more complicated looking. And that's what would have been on the unit circle that you could memorize. It would have said, this direction is your x, right? So negative 1 over root 2, which they changed to 2 over root 2, or root 2 over 2. And this one would have been negative 1 over root 2 also. And it would have answered my question really nicely. What is the sign? It's the y. Boom, it's right there. But it takes a whole bunch of extra steps, and I don't know if it's worth it. That's for you to decide. Okay. Ready? A new thing then. Uh, I'm actually not ready for that slide. Um, the new thing then for today is what happens if we don't need the side ratios, what if we need the angle? Sine of some angle I don't know gives me root or negative root 3 over 2. That, that is a typical question for today. we got to figure out the angles. Well, surprisingly enough, it's going to come down to drawing a circle and trying to draw the triangle in the right spot. And then we can maybe figure out what the angle needs to be. All right, so everybody start drawing another one of these. And I take the time right now to make a really nice one, and then you're going to copy it into your co little computer's memory banks with the lasso tool. Catch up. All students take calc. Get that all done and then put the ASTC. I know you don't know what it means yet, but I'm about to tell you. You're going to want that in your beautiful little copy that you can then repeat over and over and over again because you're going to use the same exact setup for a 
ton of problems. Like, like if you could somehow keep it permanently in the memory banks of your iPad, I would. Because like in this class, you're going to draw that same setup literally hundreds of times. Okay, here's what the AST and C stand for. Up until now, you were doing baby trig where everything was in here and everything was positive and you weren't even ever using 90s, uh, but you're, you were always in that little zone in quadrant one where everything's positive. Do you get by adding in the other quadrants, we have negative numbers now? Okay, then that means the answers for trig sometimes come out negative because you got negative sides on your triangles. So it's really, really important to know where things are negative or positive. So this little ASTC is going to tell us that all of them are positive in that quadrant. Only sine is positive in quadrant 2. Only tangent is positive in quadrant 3. And only cosine is positive in quadrant 4. ASTC, it's really quick to memorize, and we say all students take calc is just a fun way to say it, because in this class, pretty much all of you will take calc next year. It's just whether you're going to take IB or whether you're going to take AP version of it. And some of you want to just back off and take regular calc without the AP or IB, and that's fine too. All right, so let's talk about what this means in the context of my problem. Sign is negative. Where can't I be. I can't be up here, and I also can't be here because sine is positive here. Let me just show you what I mean. If I put the triangle here, do you get, if I try to stick these numbers in that they gave me, this is opposite, this is hypotenuse, my opposite side would have to be negative root 3. Does that work? That isn't negative there. That's going up. That's supposed to be positive. That can be 2, but that can't be a negative, so I can't put it there. All right, so where can I put it? Well, let's talk about where we can be. This is where I can't be. Where I can be is down here. And also over here, but I'm going to only do it one at a time. There's two answers. Okay, if you think two answers is bad, by the end of this class, by the end of this semester, you'll be having problems where the trig problems come out with six different answers. Okay, so two answers, that's nothing. All right. So one thing at a time, this triangle right here is what you should be drawing. Everybody, please get caught up to there. And then turn your iPad my way and show me your little triangle that you have drawn. I'll pause while you accomplish that. Okay, so here's my triangle. Here's my important angle. It's called the what angle? It's middle, it's not the it's a different word for middle. Central, central angle. That's the central angle. That's the important one. And from that angle's perspective, opposite's supposed to be over here, negative root 3. Hypotenuse is supposed to be 2. And do you recognize this one? It's the what, what, what triangle? One of the 30, 60, 90. Very good. It's the 1, 2, root 3, 30, 60, 90 triangle. What's across from the 1 here? 30. What's the important one? This one. And that one's what? 60. Now, why isn't the answer 60? Because really, down here, really, this is our angle. It's going all the way around to here. Because if you say the answer is 60, then you're saying that the answer is right here. Because that's where 60 is. In, up in first quadrant, but the answer shouldn't come out negative then, so it can't be 60. So I agree 60 is important, but 60 is not the answer. The answer is 180 plus the 60, which makes 240. Now, one little catch. They're going to ask you to do it in radians. The answers to these must be in radians. So. Yeah, you can take 240 and multiplying it by multiply by pi over 180 and it'll work, but it's probably better to think of it this way. This is 60, right? 
which is pi over 3. If that's pi over 3, do you get, we had a bunch of pi over 3's to get here, plus one more pi over 3, so 4 pi over 3. That's my way of thinking this through. 4 pi over 3 is the right answer. You can get it in lots of different ways. All right, I'd like you to try now to figure out what the other triangle over here is going to give you, because it's not 240. It's a much bigger angle, because you go around even further, and the angle's right there. I'm going to pause while you give that a try. Okay, here's how you should have thought this through. All right, this still has to be same side ratios. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite must be negative root 3, and hypotenuse is 2. And then this still is a 30, and this is still a 60, but the answer isn't 60. It's all the way around 2 here, which is like 360 minus the 60, which would be 300. Also known as a whole bunch of pi over 3s. How many pi over 3s? 5 pi over 3s. Because 5 times pi over 3 is really 60, right? 5 pi over 3s. So there you go. 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 are your two answers. Yes? Okay, well, first of all, we, the first thing I did was figure out that I had two places where sine was negative. All students take calc. I knew it had to be here, and I knew the other hand had to be here. Do you get that part? There's only two possibilities. And then once I knew this one was 60, also known as pi over 3, then I knew this one had to be 60 because the central angles have to be the same as each other. All right, so then I had to just say, okay, from this angle's perspective, the opposite is negative root 3 and the hypotenuse is 2. And, and then it's just, what is this really? It's really 180 plus 60. What is this one really? It's really like 360, but take away 60, 300. All right. I know these are intense. I mean, just look at that drawing for a second. Holy smokes. There's a lot going on in there. All right, so let's try another one. Ready? Cosine of some mystery angle is negative 1 over root 2. First thing you do, if you were smart and put that into the memory of your iPad, you're going to go paste, and you can have the whole circle with the ASTC on it and the X and the Y axis. I'm smart enough anyway. I have done that. There. Now I don't have to draw it every time. I'm going to pause for a second while you give this a try. Okay, let's see how you did. Do you agree that cosine is negative in this problem? And therefore, I better not draw it here because that's cosine would be positive there. And I better not draw it here, because cosine to be positive there. Then, hopefully you drew it here, is one of them. And then, uh, this is theta, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then this must be the 1, 1, root 2 triangle. Cool, I know that one, that's a 45. And the most common wrong answer is 45. Why isn't it 45? Well, first of all, it's not just like the trick question of, oh, it's supposed to be radians, so pi over 4. It's not that. It's that it's all the way around 2 here. Okay? So that's instead of 1 pi over 4, it's 3 pi over 4. Raise your hand if you had that or the 135 that would go with it. Okay, good. Then, all the way around to here, you could actually skip a lot of these steps. Do you get it's just going to be down here, and therefore it's a bunch of pi over 4s? And this would be 4 pi over 4 plus 1 more makes 5 pi over 4. Do you get I do not need to go and label all the triangle and everything? I can just use logic. Raise your hand if you had those two right. Okay, good. All right. That's pretty heavy-duty stuff. All right. So here's the last thing I need to teach you today. Question first.
Okay, so here's the last thing. What if they say, I know that sine of theta is two-thirds, oh, but they don't want to know the angle. Hmm. Well, at least I could know where I could draw that, right? But wait, there's more. I don't need the angle, but what they want to know is, what would sine of this angle be? What? All right, well, there's two ways to do this, and I think this is the easiest way. First of all, would you agree that adding pi to something really moves you around the circle? How far does it move you around the circle? Halfway. If it moves you halfway around the circle, if you figured out where theta was in the first place, and then you just moved yourself halfway around the circle, that would work. Okay? Another way to think of it is, and this actually will work better when we're subtracting, because see, that, that works great when you're adding, but what if I make this minus? Then it like makes your brain hurt. Uh, so here's a different way to think of it, and I like this way too. Would you agree if I go sine of pi, moving pi first moves me over here? Do you get what I've done so far? Then subtracting theta from that would move me back up theta. Then... I can draw my triangle in here and put in the 2 and the 3. And you might notice something. Uh, this is 2, this is 3. I don't know this triangle. It's the uh, square root of 9 and 4, and I subtract, and I'm square root of 5. Yeah, no, wait, that's negative. Okay, so there's it's the two, 2 negative root 5, 3 triangle. I don't know that one. Well, again, I never asked you for the angle. You wouldn't have to tell me the angle. What are you supposed to tell me? what is sine of this? And it would come out exactly the same as it was in the first place. It was two-thirds before, it's still two-thirds now. All right, I'm going to give you another one that's kind of like that. We're going to start with the same sine of theta as two-thirds deal, but I'm going to say, what if I did sine of two pi minus theta? Okay, uh, 2 pi. You know where 2 pi would be? It forces me to go all the way around the horn. And then what does minus theta do? Which way am I going to go now? Back down. How far? Theta. I don't know how far it is, but theta. So I'm going to go back down this way. Theta. So that's theta. All right. See how it's forcing me to draw my triangle right here? I'm going to erase all this now, and I know I have to draw my triangle right there. And by the way, make your triangle all the way out to the circle edge, and then go up. It's much cleaner than if you... Uh, some, I uh, noticed some of your triangles were like this. Just go all the way to the edge. Okay, so now, wait a minute. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite's 2. Hypotenuse is 3. What's wrong with this picture? The 2 is supposed to be negative. So then the answer is that the sine of this angle that they described would be negative two-thirds. That means that usually your answers are either the same, we did one like that a second ago, or on this one, the answer came out to the opposite of what it is. And that goes back to that unit circle. Because on the unit circle, do you remember when we moved across, it changed things to be negative? I'm talking about? You had the same answer, but it was negative now. Or when we moved down, there was a reflection, and that same answer kept happening, but it was negative or not negative or the same. Okay. So, there's a section like this on your test. So let's, or on your homework. And maybe on your test too. I don't know. We'll see. So for right now, find your homework for today, which is under day two. Do you have a question, sir? Yeah. So this would be speaking not on the unit circle, right? Because 
Yes. yes sir. Yep. And anytime you want, you can make things into the unit circle by going like this. First of all, this would be 9 and this is the square root of 5. Okay, you with me so far? Then I'd have to divide everything by? Yep. And now I'm on a unit circle. If you really need it to be on a unit circle, that's how you make it to be on a unit circle. But your answers are still the same because you just took all your numbers and divided them by 3. So the ratios, these are always a ratio, something divided by something, stays the same. Okay, moving on. Oh, 12 minutes left. Everybody find that homework. Perfect timing for the 12 minute warning. So, homework for today starts where it says day two. And all of these, uh, we're not doing all the problems, but all the ones on the first page here are assigned. These are the most important ones for the day. This is the toughest thing. These are our three level questions. Notice a couple things. When it says the answers are between zero and two pi, that means you can't have any negative answers. Even though there's a gajillion possible answers, we only want the answers that are between 0 and 2 pi. Like sine of theta equals a half. If you just look at a graph of sine, you could probably fairly quickly see that sine equals a half in like a million places. That's a spot where sine is a half. That's a spot. 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 But how many do we want? We only want the ones that are between 0 and 2 pi. It narrows it down to that part of the graph. There's two answers. Okay. Now, I know we don't usually do them that way, but I want to keep referring you back to the picture of what sine really looks like. Okay, so let's do this first one together, number 31. Everybody draw the little picture. And sine is positive a half. My new requirement, and again, I hope you made this in your iPad, because now you can just go paste, is you have ASTC on all your circles. Because that will remind you there's not just one answer. I know some of you are probably going like, the answer is 30. Get it over with. Yeah, 30 is one of my answers. But there's another one. Because sine is positive a half. It can't be here and it can't be here. But it could be there. Opposite, hypotenuse. Yeah, that is 30. But you also have one over here where that's 30. And then it's 180 minus the 30, which makes... 150. So it's 30 and 150. And notice it wanted it in radians. See how it says in radians right there? So therefore, I better change those. 30 is really pi over 6, and 150 is 5 times as big as 30, right? So then it's 5 pi over 6. That's how I like to think of these. Hmm, that one's 5 times bigger, so it's 5 times that. Okay. I want to do one weird one with you because at some point you would hit like problem 33 and a lot of people's brains just fried because they're going, okay, all students take calc. And now he's telling me uh, sine is zero. Wait a minute. First of all, there's always been two things before. It's never been just zero. So could you put it as zero over one? Sure, that's equal to zero. But then you're still going to hit something weird because you're going to be like, okay, so sine is, was it positive or negative? Zero is kind of not positive and it's kind of not negative either. That's weird. Next thing that's weird is that this is opposite and hypotenuse. And how can you have an opposite side of your triangle be zero? Anytime it's really weird, you're either here, 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 or here. Those are called the what? Quadrantals. Very good. So I know I'm at one of those quadrantals now because I can't draw a triangle. And I can't even figure out where sine is positive or negative. Like, it doesn't work. Anytime it's weird, it's a quadrantal. And then just a quick reminder, that's 1, 0. This is 0, 1. This is negative 1, 0. And this is 0, negative 1. So where is sine, which is also known as y, where is y 0? At what degrees? Would you agree that's a spot where y is 0? Would you agree that that's a spot where y is 0? And therefore, the two answers are, and do it in radians. Uh, this one's not, this one, okay. Okay, start over again. Okay, there we go. Zero is this one. And then, that one's not 2 pi, though. What's that one? There you go, pi. I know what you were thinking, that this is also 2 pi, but if you look at this, we want to be between 0 and 2 pi, and if you're going to pick between those two, don't list That's them twice. 
Okay, so 0 and pi are your two answers. This one's pi, this one's 0. And 2 pi is the same as 0, but it'd be kind of silly to list it twice. 0 and 2 pi are the same thing. All right, so there I did a weird one for you. There's another weird one in your in your list. Uh, and that'll mean, oh, must be a quadrantal. Okay, now let's move on to this page. This is that page where you got to, like, figure out where to go. I'm supposed to go pi first and then add the unknown angle. Okay, pi first, that's like this. And then I'm supposed to add, that means keep going the same direction, some unknown angle. And that's theta. So that's telling me where to draw the little picture. And the sides are right there. And then usually the answer is either the same, two-thirds, or it's the opposite, negative two-thirds. So I'll let you figure it out from there. You've got to figure out what to put here and here, and that'll tell you whether your answer is two-thirds or negative two-thirds. Okay, you're doing those three. These three, I don't feel like you need to do all three of them because one of them is a trick question, and it might hurt your head. Where is cosine equal to 3? Picture the picture of cosine. Cosine goes like this, and what's the highest cosine ever goes to? It goes as high as 1 and as low as negative 1. So when is cosine going to equal 3? How about never? Yeah, you could stretch your graph to make it happen, but the question is, cosine of what angle will equal 3? It never will. So that's a no solution. Okay, so don't hurt yourself on that one. But do these two, and here's the thing. You want to do it without the unit circle? Go ahead. But they drew the unit circle on this one to show you how easy it could be. Cosine is zero. Oh, that's a weird one because you can't have a side of zero. So I'm thinking maybe I should use, uh, it's a quadrantal, and then, oh, there's the quadrantal. They're all listed here. And which one has the cosine, which is which letter? X. X is zero. I just need to find it. It's on my picture. So you can use the picture to do 40 and 41. So where is X zero? That's a spot where X is zero. But there's another. All right. So these two you may skip. These three you may skip. The very last problem you need to do. That's a, like a review of yesterday kind of question. I will warn you, a calculator will be necessary because you're going to have to find the third side in a right triangle that has adjacent and hypotenuse. And you're going to need a calculator for that one. Okay. That's all I got for you for today.